day three of our final meeting. Are there any matters to discuss before petitions call their next meeting? Your Honor, if I, I may have a couple questions uh, for you. Um, is Your Honor all proposed to take this by council? I'll uh, propose it. Uh, very less common than no proposal. Uh, and with regard to the um, uh, rebuttal that may be presented by the respondent, is the petitioner allowed a rebuttal witness, a reply witness in, to the rebuttal? If it's true rebuttal, yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, call the next witness, please. Uh, uh, the uh, petitioner calls um, Willard Randall. Please come up here. Good morning. Good morning sir. Raise your right hand, please. Do yes, you sir. swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Willard Randall, W I L L A R D R A N D A L L. Yes. Thank you, Don. Mr. Randall, where do you uh, presently reside? Columbia County. And how long have you resided there? Off and on for about 30 years. Are you in a city limit? No, sir. Are you uh, currently working or retired? I'm retired, sir. And when did you retire? Around 92, 93, somewhere in there, sir. And what was your occupation prior to retirement? Welding, pipeline welding. For how many years did you do pipeline welding? Close to 30. And during those 30 years, was that your um, primary occupation? Yes, sir. And what type of pipelines? Um, gas, oil, um, you name it. Okay. You know, uh, chemical. And these, I'm uh, assuming because you're a welder, these were steel pipelines? Yes, sir. Stainless steel, um, carbon steel, uh, aluminum, depending on what chemical plants, different things qualify for different things. What was your uh, um, training for that profession? You rode a hard enough. On the job training? Yes, sir. Uh, were you in the service? You were military service? Yes, sir, United States Marine Corps. And did you begin welding after the Marine Corps? Yes, sir. Did you do any welding in the <coughs> Marine Corps? A little bit, yes, sir. I was the weird 27, working with the repair squad in 27. Took care of things, you know. That's why I started that. Have you worked on any pipelines that were uh, portions of which went below the ground? Yes, sir. How far deep have you personally been Probably while welding? About 10 feet. Right. Is that a, a common distance? Well, it depends where you're at. All right. Depends on the terrain? Yes, sir. What parts uh, did you do any of your pipeline work in the state of Florida? Yes, sir. And you did some in other states as well? Yes, sir. From uh, Wyoming down to uh, Texas, Louisiana, California, Louisiana, um, all the way to Florida, all over. Oh, that's been eight years in the Gulf War. Out on the rigs? Yes, sir. Oil rigs? Yes, sir. Did you work on pipeline on the oil rigs from land to the rig? Yeah, we have bait barges, yes, sir. We laid a, well, you heard of a dermot mouth, they had rolled the pipe. We go out there, tie it in, put it on bait barges, and roll it out and bring it in, make the tie in with the compressor. Do you have to go into water for any of that work? I wasn't under water diving, no. So yes, they do, but I didn't. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to uh, present Mr. Uh, uh, Randall as an expert in the area of pipe welding, uh, of steel pipes used for uh, transport of natural gas. Your Honor, we object. This witness was listed as a fact witness. This is I have a clipboard audio. Um, 
Why would you listen to this back witness if he's going to be an expert testimony? Right. Um, it is true, Your Honor, we, we learned of his expertise uh, after uh, learning more about this. So, also, so he is listed as a fact witness. There would have been no opportunity to depose him as an expert, so I'm not sure the difference. But. Although we would have been able to prepare for him. All right. Let's, let's see what happens. Uh, and uh, you can apprise me of any any need for a rebuttal that you're not prepared for once we see, see what kind of questions are asked. Poor Don? Yes, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. How are you doing, sir? As a fellow veteran, I thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. You're not a professional engineer, are you? No, sir. Did you go to formal, uh, you said you started learning welding in the, the Marine Corps? Yes, sir. All right, were you a, an actual welder in the Marine Corps? Yes, sir. Did you go to, did the Marine Corps send you to a school? No, sir, they didn't have no school back now. Right. So you just sort of learned on the flat line? Yes, sir. Right. And did you take any, uh, after the Marine Corps, did you go to any schools? I did from Daniels, Round the Roof, some power plants and stuff, they just put us in the schools for that because they had a certain technique they wanted to use for nuclear and stuff like that nature. So the employers would send you to a specific training for the type they of They had the training on site, yes sir. For the type of welding they wanted? Yes sir. And did you go to specific training for uh, any of the pipeline work? No sir, not specific training for the pipeline work, you had to know what you were doing and the test the end. And then if you, if you didn't bust that, you got the job. And so it's fair to say you've never passed. Are you familiar with the, the API 1104 standards? No, sir. And so it's fair to say you've never taken the API 1104 welder qualification exam? I took the, I took the bell hole test. I took the G-stick test and the other tests. You said you've worked on a dome, number of different pipes, different types of steel, and you even described some of the different yeah, types sure. of steel. So you probably, you probably more than anyone in this room knows that all steel is not made the same, correct? Correct, sir. And based on the type of steel in this formulation, the welding practice is different? Yes, sir. And it's important to know that? Yes, sir, it is. You better know what you're doing. Exactly. I don't have a problem if he's qualified as an expert. I will have concerns, Your Honor, uh, as to relevancy of this testimony, but we can deal that with the questions. I understand. Uh, we're going to wait. Uh, relevance is to all, always be uh, an issue that can be raised. All right, he's accepted as an expert lawyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, work on natural gas pipelines. Have you ever done any leak detection? Yes, sir. Bunch of it. Bunch of it? Yes, sir. Uh, how was a leak detected? Well, normally you have to dig it up. <clears throat> um, if you get a low ground, low pipe pressure, <coughs> they'll have to go out there and start finding it because you can't smell it above the ground. So they'll dig it up and you'll for days and then you'll Finding, you'll bring in gas sniffers and stuff of that nature and locate it and then go to repair it. Could you uh, describe what a gas sniffer is? It's an it's a, um, electronic machine with a wand on it right. that smells the gas and it'll beep, 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 beep and it'll tell you there's a leak there. And, so you let, and then in, in, uh, in Louisiana, Florida, here you get a lot of swamp gas. A lot of times you have to get a different type of tester for the gas, and you don't get the swamp gas because of the swamp. You know what I'm saying? So would it be correct that, generally speaking, if there was suspicion of a leak, the crew would be called in to, to dig and search and sniff and find it, and then the welders would be called in to fix it? Mm -hmm. Well, we worked as a team, sir. Okay. We worked as a team, so we had we had back a lot operators, stuff like that. It was able to dig it up without getting into the pipe. And once you get the bell hole up, 
unwrap it and detect it, a lot of times it would be violent away. So you'd have to build pumpkins to put over it, and a pumpkin is a piece of pipe bigger than the pipe. It well two ends in it, cut the diameter of the pipe out on each end, split the pipe, put a three-quarter inch nipple in it with a six-inch riser, weld the pipe up, everything up, unscrew it, and screw your plug in your nipple and stop the leak. That was the only way you could, you could shut it down. All right, so that would allow, allow for continuous use? Sir? That would allow for continuous use? Yes, sir, because if you shut a gas pipeline down, you have to close off every pot of light, every valve in town, and that can create quite a disaster. They have to call in everybody because it takes the gas person out to relight everything. Understood. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And would you explain for the uh, for the court for the record what a bell hole is? A bell hole is where they dig a big hole so a person can get down inside of it and exposes all the pipe so you can weld around it. Because you can't just do it on the, in the ground. You got to be able to get underneath and on all sides. So, about how much clearance would need be needed uh, for someone like yourself to get in there and work on a, a pipe after the probably, pumpkins? Probably a four by six hole. Uh, and how below the pipe as well? Below the pipe, about two feet. About two feet below. Yes, yeah, so they're big enough for your body and your head to get underneath so you can see what you're doing. All right, four to six feet on each side of the pipe? No, sir. All together. All together. Yes. Sir. Unless there was multiple pipes that made it cross, then the hole would have to be naturally bigger to, um, you know, accommodate it. You ever run into instances where uh, natural gas pipelines crossed each other? Yes, sir. Right down Lake City. You ever have to service anything like that? Yes, sir. Does it uh, uh, complicate the process? Sir? Does it complicate the process to have crossing yes, lines? Yes, sir, it does, sir. How, how would that be? Well, when you've got a pipe laying on top of pipe, you've got a crib. It's hard to get in there. So you have to take the bag of well and it off. You have to break your limb, bend your rod, and do the best you can to get the sleep stopped. Because the one pipe, the one that's not leaking, is in the way one you're trying to service. Yes, sir. You can't just use your. We used to use our um, sock hood. I'm sorry? A sock hood instead of a well hood. Oh, right. It came over your head, so you had a little small lens to look to. Uh, you ever run into any issues of uh, electro electrolysis? Yes, sir. When the zinc packs wear out, they, they got a 25 pound bag of zinc with a copper lead that goes out. And they're periodically, these zinc packs, they wear out, they go out. Like Excuse me, Why is there a zinc pack? Electrolysis, sir, in the ground that eats the pipe up. Right. You know, it's like the rust factor creates a chemical reaction into it. I don't know the exact terminology for mm -hmm. it, but they also use zinc packs on ships mm -hmm. to keep the holes from rusting out and stuff of that nature because any time you have a, a um, <clears throat> uh, alloy in a ground area, especially around phosphate, stuff like this, swamp, you're going to get this electrolysis and it's going to tear it up. So the zinc, if I understand correctly, pulls that electrolysis away from the pipe over Jackson, to the zinc? Your Honor, this witness may be an expert welder, but he's not been qualified to talk about electrolysis or cathodic protection or zinc packs. It's all I think part of the same I think it's part of the same expertise. Uh, to you mentioned a 25 pound zinc pack. Yes. Sir. What size pipe would that be used? Well, normally 25 pounds is like a 6 to an 8 or a 12 inch. Anything bigger than a bigger zinc pack. And it depends how much line you got, to how many feet, to how many zinc pack goes down the line. Um, can you just give a rough idea of how frequently a zinc pack may be located on, say, a 12 inch pipe? I'd say about every. Well, let's say roughly in the, about this part of Florida. About every 15 joints, you would drop a zinc pack in. You would drop it in the bell hole where you made your connection at. You will scar the pipe up with your grinder. You won't weld the thing. You have to raise the, the copper onto the pipe and then wrap it. 
how you wrap it. And about how far apart is the joint? A joint, normally a joint of pipe on the average is 21 feet. They come in 40 foot lengths also, sir. So uh, a zinc pack could be located? Um, it depends on the engineer, what he what he deems to where they need to be put down at. All right. Um, how often do the zinc packs need service? Is it, I'm sure that depends. Well, sometimes five, maybe ten years, depends on the size of the pack. It's like a burlap sack, and the zinc is inside that sack. So it don't last forever. Okay. Are you a member of uh, Walls? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And are you affected by the uh, proposed single trail pipeline? Yeah, I heard about it. I got a, I got a, I'm about a mile and a half off the 20, and I've got a natural um, on on my, my land, and it, it's fed by the 20, I believe. My groundwater is, yes, yeah, sir. Have you ever worked on a pipe bigger than uh, natural gas pipe bigger than 24 inch? No, sir. So about 24 inch is about my extent. Is there more difficulty installing a 24 inch pipe than, say, a 12 inch pipe? Yes, sir. A bunch of different. And it depends on the ground terrain. It depends on every, you know, you Objection. Can't. Now he's talking about installing the pipe as opposed to welding the pipe. Those hand in hand, sir. Well, Mr. Randall, when when you did your pipeline, natural gas pipeline work, were you called in just to do repairs, or did no. you do original installations? Both, well? both, sir. In both. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, what is matting? Matting is when you have a piece of machinery in the swamp. And you've got to have a drag line or a bulldozer out there or something to keep the machine from sinking. Objection, so this is not about welding. Yes, sir, it is, sir. Without that, you can't get the welding machine in there to do the work. So the machine you're referring to is a welding machine? The welding machine is on skids a lot of times. A lot of times you use corduroy roads. And a corduroy road is a road that's made out of big planks. They're laid down flat and they crisscross. And you drive down them, you take the weld machine off of your truck, put it on a skid, and they skid it out because of the ground, the muck, and everything. You can't take a truck out there because it's going to sink. So the mat's got to hold the equipment, plus bring your machinery, plus the bottles out, and everything else. Does that require a. Well, let me ask you, Yes, sir. None of this is made relevant by tying it to a proposed pipeline. For example, okay. if they're just on the subject of matting, what if matting's not uh, proposed for this pipeline? Uh, what if he doesn't know anything about matting uh, that is proposed? Uh, zinc packs, we don't, he hasn't set, compared what he knows about zinc packs to uh, what's proposed for zinc packs or, or Product protection, or whatever you call it, basically electrolysis. <coughs> Each part of it, we don't, you know, why, I don't know that it's relevant. How is it relevant? It's not tied to anything. Thank you. And we, we may be best talking about uh, matters which are not even uh, not even involved in this project. Will I was on. Um, may, may I proceed? Yes. Um, Mr. Uh, Randall. In the, uh, you mentioned before that there's phosphate in the terrain in this part of the state? Yes, sir. A lot of it. Is the phosphate contribute to electrolysis? Big time, yes, sir. Okay. A proposed pipeline to be, are you familiar with the Sable Trail proposed pipeline, the path that you're going to run down? Yes, sir. Does that, from your uh, experience on working on different terrains, does that include the type of terrain where a um, Matting would have to be used? Yes, sir. Is it matting generally used in the swamp like terrain? Yes, sir. You better have it. You're going to lose your equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, the 
the uh, uh, the joint pipe joints expand and contract. They they expand and contract depending on the atmosphere and everything. Yes, sir. And is there anything in the atmosphere in this uh, proposed path of the uh, Sable Trail pipeline that would have? Well, anything? because you're going in the ground, the ground holds a certain temperature, but you still you're going to have you got to have expansion joints every so often to allow for this expansion and contraction of the pipe. Is there anything in the terrain of the Sable Trail path? that contributes uh, in any way to expansion and contraction as opposed to, let's say, a uh, uh, land uh, I would object to the Sable Trail path. What are you, where exactly are you asking? Yeah, if, let's stick to Suwannee County where, where you live. Yes, sir. That portion of the trail. There's no foundation laid that he actually even knows the route in Suwannee County. Um, he did state that you have a, an idea of where the uh, path to the yes, trail. Sir pipe is proposed to run. Yes, sir. And how did you become aware of that information? On the map, yes, sir. Oh, which map that is? And that's the one that I've seen uh, John Dews of the, of the line going down. And this area is well, dominant with phosphate, as you well know as Officer General, the phosphate mine. And then it goes down south, and you get Bartow down in that area, there's a vein that goes all the way through down that way. Were you in the court to see every room yesterday, sir? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, what part of the day? Well, in and off because I got this long problem. I talked a lot. So you were uh, in and out all day? Yes, yeah, sir. Were you in the hearing room on the day before yesterday? Yes, yeah, sir. Same thing in and out throughout the day? Yes, yeah, sir. Did you hear some of the testimony? Yes, yeah, sir. There's one man said ask about the um, what what kind of pipe they use, and he, he couldn't answer the question. It's carbon steel pipe. It's carbon steel pipe. And then they had another man ask the question, the diameter of the pipe. The diameter of the pipe goes from outside to outside, not inside to inside. So a 36-inch pipe is measured from outside to outside. Yeah. And then another question is, we're into narrative testimony again, commenting on previous testimony without being elicited to do so by questions. I the witness, Thank you, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, yeah, Mr. Ringel, uh, if you will, sir, uh, wait, uh, wait for a question and provide the answer to the question yes. uh, before moving forward. Yes. Thank you. Um, based on your experience, uh, is the uh, di diameter of a pipe measured from its inside or outside dimensions? Outside, outside, outside. Yes, answered, Your Honor. He just said that. I, 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 that happens a lot. Go ahead. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, do you have any uh, knowledge whether a carbon steel pipe would be used in this part of the That's the answer, Your Honor. He just said that. Actually, it was not asked. Okay. I'm sorry, the objection was sustained. Um, it was sustained. So, but objections are questions in general. The type of coating on a pipe, I'm going to ask it a little differently. Are um, carbon steel pipes coated? Yes. And do they have different types of coating? Well, the only one I dealt with was a um, baked bone coating. I'm not under the impression this pipe is going to be coated on the inside as well as the outside. But I bought an example of a pipe being well together because you got about four inches, maybe six inches of the pipe is bare because you got you can't grind, you can't weld through that coating. It's too right. soon, sir. Your Honor, for demonstrative purposes only, can we uh, just use the example to make this? Your Honor, it's able to objects unless it happens to be a, a section of our pipeline that's been welded. It's unlikely since the pipeline hasn't been built yet. Or testimony that would indicate that whatever proposed piece of steel he has is actually the same formulation of steel <coughs> that's going to be proposed in this pipeline. We'll stipulate that it is not part of the same trail pipeline. Then it's irrelevant, Your Honor. Uh, I think we're, this is at a general level. Testimony, I think. Um, 
but it has to be related at least in terms of the uh, unnecessarily exact, you know, the same side of the same steel, but the same uh, welding processes involved. Uh, we have to know that it's at least relevant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Andrew, would you repeat the, uh, what you were said about the, the coating? The coating is baked down. Okay. And, baked, and your understanding is the pipe that, the pipe you have is baked on the outside or the inside? The pipe we use is baked on the outside. Only? Only. Okay. And why does the coating matter in respect it's, to welding? It, it, well, it stops the rust factor and the abrasion and stuff of this nature. But when you pull a piece of pipe through, you'll skin the bark on it. And how do you know where you skin it at? Our projection now is talking about pipeline construction or pulling the pipe into the ground. And I still don't know what coating is, and I don't know how he knows that coating is going to be or not be used for this project. It's, it's, it's common nature, sir, that all pipelines are Your coated. Honor. He says they're all coated. Yes, sir, they're all coated. Sorry, Back in the old days, they used tar coating. So the tar coating deteriorated, so they come up with a new technology of baking the coating on, except with the wheels coated. Then you have to, you have to um, primer and put a wrap around it to protect that pipe from the outside element. There's nothing that protects the inside element. Thank you, Honor. And um, based on your experience, is it inevitable that some of the coating gets scraped in the installation process? Yes, sir, it does. And is a welder called in to remedy that? You can't find it, no, sir. Okay. Once it's in the ground, it happens, it's there. There's no way to detect that. So that scraping causes a, uh, a rust factor, de deterioration. Of the pipes. Of the pipes. It weakens the pipes' integrity. Yes, sir. It, it, and, and what does that mean from a welder's perspective? Well, a welder's perspective is it's going to be a glitch down the road somewhere. It's going to rust through and you're going to end up with a leak. And then welder would hope to call the pipes. Right. Is that the type of Working the two pipes together, you were referring to? Um, no, so that you had to build a pumpkin again right. to go over that because there's no way to patch it. When you got when you got pipe under pressure, you cannot weld under pressure. You got to release that pressure outward mm -hmm. in order to fix. You can't just throw a weld rod up there because you're going to have one heck of an explosion. So is it would it be uh, accurate? Reasonably foreseeable that some of the pipe along the Sable Trail is one account. Yes, Your Honor, leaving. Okay. Uh, the sample you brought with you, sir, what would that uh, serve to uh, show the, uh, the judge? Well, the first thing you got to do with a piece of pipe, you got to put a bead in it. The bead is your root pass. Pipe is doubled off of 33, have an 8 degree bevel, 1 8 land. The one eight gap. So you put your bead in the pipe, and the bead's got to be like a pencil abrasion. So when you run a pig through the line, a pig is a bullet for the wires that clean the pipeline out. So you don't want a bunch of um, dog legs in there to tear that bullet up. And restrict the flow of gas going through that line also. Anything to obstruct it. Have you ever experienced an explosion of gas? Yes, sir. Were you called in to repair that? Yes, sir. And uh, what state did that occur in? Right here in Lake City, sir. And uh, that type of repair, um, did the terrain in Lake City, uh, uh, what, what gas leaks out of a pipe? Does it stay in the dirt or does it evaporate it up into the air? It stays in the dirt until you open the hole up right. and then she goes. The mountain don't make no sparks. All right. In Lake City was. I was a gas pipe welder from the city of Lake City, yes, sir. Oh, for the city itself? Yes, sir. I got my ID card right there, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, be 
receiving uh, the. Uh, I have nothing further for Mr. Randall. Thank you, sir. Yes. Which is cost, Mr. Sobrelli. Thank you, Your Honor. Just a quick cross. Did you review any technical information as to the welding plan for the Sable Trail Pipeline? No, sir. And have you reviewed any aspect of the ERP application that's the subject of this present proceeding? No, sir. And you don't know what the formulation of steel that's going to be used for this proposed pipeline, correct? I don't know the formula of steel, <clears throat> but normally it's carbon steel. But you don't have you haven't reviewed any specs for this project. No, sir. And you talked earlier about your concern about when pipelines cross each other and having enough access between the two. But you haven't reviewed any crossing plans proposed for this project, correct? No, sir. And you're not aware of the cathodic protection plan for this project, correct? No, sir. And zinc packs are not the only way to provide cathodic protection, correct? That's the only thing I ever know they work, sir. Besides they put the trace line in, you know, know where the pipeline lays at. The zinc is about the only thing I know demand is a stop and cross. It was surprised you there's no expansion choice proposed for this pipeline? They do have to be. I mean, you know, common sense takes that. I don't have any further questions, Your Honor. Just one, Your Honor, or just a couple anyway. Um, you say you retired in 92 or 93, correct? Yes, sir. Um, is it possible that welding technology has changed since you retired over 22 years ago? Well, sir. Object to the form of the question, you the word is it possible? The well of God has the same. Wait just a second. Your, uh, uh, sir, one second. Let's, let's, okay, I'll just stand. It's certainly possible. Everything's possible. Does the, uh, Technology associated with the field of welding and pipeline construction, does those technologies change rapidly over time? No, sir. It's pretty much done the way it's been done for the last 14 years. So you don't believe that there have been any technological changes since you retired? No, sir. I don't. I don't I, I've been around and I, you know, I try to keep abreast of it because of helping kids in schools and stuff like that. And they use the same technology as what I had because I tried to instruct them on how to do the welding and stuff of that nature. But didn't you testify earlier that there's a new techniques available for coating pipes? They they coated they, they use the baking system now. Yes, sir. So that's a change in technology, isn't it? Yes, sir. Versus the old old style tar. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Randall, you stated that zinc is the only thing that works for cathodic protection. Yes, sir. Are there Steel other work. methods that you're aware of? Sir? Are there other methods used that you're aware of? No, sir, I, I know of. And you mentioned uh, earlier that zinc is <coughs> on ships? Yes, steel sir. Ships? It's welded on all ships that are below the sea level to stop the crosses, to stop the rot of the metal. Um, and the zinc bar is actually deteriorate. As they deteriorate, they dry dot, and they have to change these zinc bars. So just, just to be sure, Mr. Uh, my question, I, I recognize your testimony to be that zinc is the only material that really works. Yes, sir. Are there any other materials or any other processes that you're aware of that maybe don't work as well? Your Honor, I check. We're beyond welding. Okay. Thank you. That's not too much. Of course, it's not the further Thank you, sir. You may step down. Thank you, sir.